back. Uh, in this segment, we're going to start actually working in chapter three of uh, Shigley's book. And this chapter is uh, dedicated to teaching us how to do uh, or refresh our memories, actually, because a lot of you have taken some of this material before. But here we will focus on how to do stress analysis for design. So it will be a little bit of a refresher of what you've learned before, but to make you more competent in using the design techniques to learn uh, stress analysis. And later on in uh, chapter five, we will apply that to failure analysis and uh, design uh, uh, criteria. So three is going to be on the stress, uh, four is going to be on the deflection, five is going to be on applications in uh, stress in uh, failure theory. So I'm going to just give you a big idea about what uh, we are trying to do in chapter three. And uh, then uh, this segment will be focusing on the very elementary part of uh, stress analysis. And that is how to do a very good uh, free body diagram to define the forces and the torques and the, and the moments uh, on a particular system. As you know, the focus of the course is uh, on eventually uh, being able to design uh, power transmission systems uh, which are composed of uh, shafts uh, of different dimensions. And um, to transmit the power, we have to use uh, gears, uh, pulleys, uh, flywheels, and so forth. Many different devices uh, that are connected to shafts. So let's kind of uh, see what this uh, chapter is about. And then we will uh, delve right into uh, a, um, an example on uh, uh, the use of free body diagrams. So the, the uh, course is uh, uh, basically uh, focusing now on load and stress analysis. And uh, beyond this point, uh, we have, uh, if you look at the different aspects of the chapter, you see that uh, we have to study uh, first equilibrium and uh, free body diagrams. And uh, then uh, we will refresh our memories on uh, shear force and um, uh, bending moment diagrams. So this is kind of uh, the elementary uh, part of the, of the chapter. And uh, then we'll learn about uh, uh, a couple of methods. One of them is singularity functions to determine shear force and bending moment diagrams. Um, stress components, uh, more circle review of 2D elasticity. Then we uh, progress to 3D uh, description of the stress tensor uh, elastic strain because that will be used in failure theories. Um, and then we will uh, look at specifically at beams because uh, power transmission systems we looked at as uh, either beams under bending or under torsion and uh, then we will uh, list and describe uh, a bunch of other uh, key um, formulas and these key formulas are typically used in mechanical design and these formulas will come from areas of uh, elasticity uh, based on uh, uh, knowing how to do calculations for stress concentration factors, uh, to apply this to uh, fraction mechanics later, uh, to determine the stress distributions in pressurized cylinders, uh, in uh, press fits, which is a very important part of that course, um, and also uh, in uh, contact uh, uh, stresses uh, such as what where we encounter in bearings, for example, and the design of bearings. So all of these things will be uh, required from us uh, in, in this chapter. So we're going to start first uh, talking about uh, free body diagram. And the, free, the best example for free body diagram is the example of a, uh, a speed reducer, which is uh, a gearbox, essentially, but it's a very simple gearbox. In the actual physical uh, version of this course at UCLA, uh, we asked the students to do a project to build a gear reducer uh, and use uh, CAD uh, 
software to build it uh, on the computer and then use uh, analytical methods that we're going to learn here in the course to analyze it and then later on use uh, uh, finite element software to study the stress distributions based on the forces that uh, are encountered in uh, this power transmission uh, gearbox and finally they actually go to the machine shop and uh, they machine the shafts they attach the uh, gears and they connect it to the gearbox they design the gearbox and they demonstrate uh, that design but for the online part we're going to just do uh, everything that I mentioned without actually machining it because of the constraints of the online uh, part of the course so let's go to directly uh, to analyze a free body diagram so if you look here uh, you see that I have actually a gearbox and the gearbox um, we have an input torque and the input torque is 240 pound foot inch that's these are the units of the torque and uh, we have one input shaft which is AB this is the input shaft and then we also have an output shaft that delivers an output torque T out that we need to uh, it's a part of the design process required and uh, very simply we just have the transmission of uh, the uh, torque is through the use of a, a gear pair uh, a G1 and G2 and uh, we want to analyze completely uh, the forces and the torques on this system uh, we also note that the gearbox is attached to uh, from its side at these uh, points, uh, point uh, uh, EFGH, and uh, through bolts. Uh, so there are reactions from another bigger system. Let's say it's a wall that's attached to a wall or attached to another bigger machine where the reactions are actually coming from the other part of the machine. We also note that we have um, a coordinate system that is X and in, uh, going into this direction, Y, and then Z. And uh, therefore, the shafts, the input shaft and the output shaft are aligned in the X direction, as you can see here. So that's kind of the description of uh, the uh, uh, gearbox uh, overall. So you have a box and uh, we want to actually um, draw a free body diagram. So the free body diagram you can come from the global, very big, uh, first and then you can and then you go to the local part of the uh, problem. So from the global we will look at the entire gearbox. We have an input torque 240 and then an output that we will determine from uh, torque equilibrium and the ratios of the gear ratios and uh, then from overall we have input and output and and then it's very important to note that this gearbox is loaded in other words the output is connected to a machine where it's loaded so it's resisted uh, on the other side the output side so that creates kind of an entire torque on the box itself and that torque on the box has to be resisted by the forces developed uh, in uh, the, uh, the bolts. So I look at it as an integrated box. We have a torque input and output and the two together will actually you see that it will add up to, to want to, to turn the box uh, on its side and in order for the box to stay in place then uh, it will have to be resisted by the moments generated by the forces uh, on the bolts themselves. Once I do that then I go inside and then when I go inside I can take each one of these shafts, input shaft and I do a free box, a free body diagram on it and I go to the output shaft and I also do a free body diagram on the output shaft and then I'll have uh, everything defined uh, and I, I would uh, in, that, in that case I would know all of the forces that are acting uh, on the uh, elements of the box and from the uh, next step that we will learn once we know the forces we know uh, the torques we know the moments then we should be able to design the deflection of each part of the box 
and then figure out the stress distributions. So that's kind of the general procedure as we move on uh, throughout the course in understanding the uh, power transmission aspect of this design uh, problem. Let's go back here. And uh, as we go back here, then we see that uh, we have uh, the, uh, the gearbox is uh, 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 resisted here uh, by the forces uh, in the, uh, on the bolts. And uh, uh, we need first to determine, in order for us to determine the forces on the bolts, we need to uh, do equilibrium on the torque. So I have a torque input 240 and then and uh, and then uh, the rotation uh, of the input uh, shaft is um, say clockwise the rotation of the output shaft is counterclockwise and if it's loaded then it will be resisted by an, a torque TO that is actually in the same direction as TI so TI plus TO would represent the overall torque on that system so if I go a little bit uh, deeper into the box and I go into each uh, uh, component, uh, so the input um, shaft, uh, yeah, this is the input and output shaft. So if the input shaft is uh, to uh, the left here in the figure and then the output is to the right, the key aspect of this problem that we see is that if I know the input torque and I know the input torque is 240 and uh, I want to find uh, reactions at bearings RA and um, X and RAY and then reaction at the bearing B RBX and RBY and uh, also uh, the force that is a contact force at the gear and the contact force at the gear has a horizontal component F and the normal component N uh, going back to what is important here, what's important is that um, the uh, uh, actual transmission of the force at um, the uh, uh, gear is uh, conducted at a pressure angle and the pressure angle is phi. So if you look here, uh, the force is transmitted always at a pressure angle phi that can be 15 or 20 degrees. So it is given to us from the tables, like for the type of gear that you have. If you have a spur gear, then you have you know the angle phi, and therefore the over the total force is has to be broken into a horizontal and a vertical component. So uh, let's now do an equilibrium of the input uh, uh, shaft. So the equilibrium of the input shaft is uh, shown here, where uh, the sum of the moments uh, on uh, on the x-axis uh, about the x-axis is zero and that is the horizontal force F times the radius of uh, the input uh, gear 0.75 and uh, uh, the uh, uh, that should be uh, resisted by the input torque minus 240 so if we take uh, clockwise as negative, so it's a negative convention here, then counterclockwise will be positive convention and therefore the horizontal force uh, that is acting on the gear, uh, the contact force is known right now as 320 pound force. From that and the uh, geometry, simple geometry, we can determine the normal component uh, of the force. So now I know uh, the horizontal and normal component uh, transmitted uh, at the gear. And uh, all what I need to figure out is that I have a horizontal component F that is known 320 and a normal component N that is also known as 116.5. And these are, these are the two forces at the gear concentrated at the gear and they are resisted by uh, forces at the bearings A and B and you have horizontal and uh, and vertical and you just do a very simple equilibrium of horizontal forces and, and uh, vertical forces and moments a moment at both ends uh, equal to zero because we don't have 
we assume simple support, then we will be able to uh, find the uh, four reactions uh, that are required. So you can see here uh, we found RAY, RAZ, and then RBY and RBZ uh, are all found. And uh, uh, once we do that, we can actually uh, go move back to the output uh, shaft and uh, we have the again the input forces are n and f are uh, the same because they're reverse and do analysis to get the unknown reactions so we got eight reactions right away once we know the contact uh, forces at the gears now i move on to the overall overall uh, uh, balance of the gearbox and as i mentioned uh, note here that uh, the torque, input torque, and output torque add up to 720 because the gearbox is loaded. And right now we can have trouble finding the reactions at the supports because we have too many unknowns. Uh, we have one uh, known which is 720 and the 720 torque is reacted by uh, the four forces that you can see at the bolts. Therefore we need to make a, an assumption and the assumption that we make is that the forces at the bolts are the same or symmetric because we don't have good reason to say that this bolt is tightened more than the other one and therefore it's going to exert a different force. So if we take the force in a bolt at each bolt to be the same and uh, uh, give it a general direction and uh, then get the center of rotation on the face and take the moment of each one of these forces about the center of rotation on that face that resisting uh, torque should be equal to the total torque of 720 that is trying to move the gearbox and that will be the final part of that uh, uh, analysis that is needed at this point so if you look here, uh, I do uh, solve equations now that the, the sum of the moments uh, of uh, each one of these forces about the center of rotation, like if I take the distances from each force to the center of rotation, and I multiply the force times that distance, um, then I get the job done. So if you can see here, that uh, I have to calculate the distance from the bolt to the center and this using the, this Pythagorean theorem uh, to get 3.2 inches and uh, then assume that RE equals RF equals RH equals RI equals one number that is missing and do the 4R times distance equals 720 solve for the resistance and that gives me the overall uh, for the force at each uh, bolt that is required. So with this I think it's a complete example of a free body diagram uh, and it gives you an idea about where we're heading. We're going to uh, do more and more and more on power transmission systems uh, such as uh, the gear box. So it's an example of power transmission that can go with us once we understand it very well, then it can go with us to more complex machinery that have uh, power transmitted uh, between different shafts at different locations with uh, a variety of uh, elements such as gears and belts and, and uh, pulleys and, uh, and uh, other pins and things like that that uh, would be uh, designed uh, uh, in, in the power transmission system. So we'll uh, stop here for, on this example and pick up uh, uh, on the next uh, 